lovely to be with you this morning again. And uh, I'm sure that uh, you all have had your fair share of uh, struggles this past week and up, ups also. I'm sure there's been some great points of uh, moments of, um, of rejoicing. Um, this past week, I've just been meditating on, particularly on Ephesians chapter six, uh, where he talks about the armor of God. So important, so important. I thought how funny it is when you, if you ever saw somebody with half an armor, that would just be so ridiculous. Uh, either you wear the whole armor or you don't wear anything at all. Uh, half an armor is just, is just being absolutely unguarded and unprepared. Uh, as we move forward as a family, as a church, as a community, uh, as believers, disciples of the Lord Jesus, um, it's important that we understand what this year is for us. Like we, we need to have a game plan, a strategy plan. We need to have, uh, uh, you know, a spiritual goal for this year. And as I think about it, we were already, my goodness, it's already the 30, 31st of January. The month is gone. And uh, we are hurtling into the middle of this year real soon. But if you have your Bibles, uh, Ephesians chapter 6, let me ra uh, race through verse 10 to 18, reminding you that this is just a devotion. The main sermon or the main teaching is on the Bible Talks on the YouTube channel. It's already premiered at 930, and you can watch that at your convenience. But do watch it on a Sunday and make it uh, your, your diet for Sunday. Sit down with a, with a piece of paper or a notebook, pad, uh, pen, just make sure that you, you, know, you get into the passage of scripture. So that's where I do my real teaching. Just as a devotional thought before we go, into the, the, go to the Lord's table. He says here, uh, Paul's talking to the Ephesians church. He says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That's where believers live their uh, live their life. They live out of the strength of God, not out of their own strength. So they are less disappointed. They have less to regret and they have less to have to confess. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And he's coming to the end of a whole letter of stuff he's been saying. Therefore, he says, finally. Uh, he starts by saying uh, in verse 11, put on the whole armor of God. This is both uh, a Roman analogy that is very familiar to the to the audience he's talking to. So everything is, I mean, they would have seen soldiers walking around. They would have seen the armor. Uh, and he's taking something very real, very, very relevant, uh, something they see every day. And they are reminding himself of a spiritual analogy here. Put on the whole armor of God because half the armor is just downright ridiculous. You are giving the enemy an invitation to come take you down, to take you down. So I'm thinking as members of uh, Covenant Life, as, as a family, how are we dressed? Are we dressed to, to, to secure ourselves? Have we put on everything? Do we make it a point every week to ensure that every armor is put on? Uh, a person who puts on an armor goes through quite a ritual it's quite a ritual, actually, because he, he, he makes sure from top to bottom, he's wearing everything, everything is tight, everything is snug, because he's going to go into battle. He's not dressing up to go to the mall. He's not dressing up to just spend the day at home. He is going to battle. And when you go to battle, you make sure that you got everything. Why? Because you don't want the, you don't want the enemy to have a, an advantage. That's just plain sense. So he says in verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to, hello, it says stand, not fight. It's a stand because the battle belongs to the Lord. He's the one who's fighting our battles. This is a spiritual battle and this is a psychological battle. This is a spiritual battle and it's a psychological battle. It is not a physical battle. It is not a people or relational battle. It's not your mother-in-law. It's not the auto guy. It's not your boss. It's not the maid. It's a battle that's beyond us. So it's a psychological battle and it is a spiritual battle. So he says, so that you may uh, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. So the whole thing about a believer, the entire uh, accomplishment of a believer is just to be able to stand your ground. 
what what and when do you need to stand your ground when you're guarding ground you need to stand your ground and when you're guarding ground you know what a, the meaning of the word foothold the foothold uh, uh, phrase or or word is a army phrase it is a military phrase when the enemy encroaches from off the sea onto the land or from wherever he is he he gets a little bit of piece of land he gets onto land and cap captures just a little bit of the land once his he's got that then he can move his troops in he can move reinforcements in we've seen that happen in in history in and and that's why we have army at the border we have defense at the border because we have to stand our ground we need to uh look up once he has a foothold he sends and then he uh, he sends his troops in and then he starts taking more and more land and who what land are we talking about we're talking about our character we're talking about our 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 purity we're talking about our mental state once the enemy is in once we have given him a foothold that's all he needs now he'll bring in reinforcements and he'll begin to take on take more ground take more ground you know the phrase he'll take more ground so we are called to stand god will fight he is the one who fights our battles we are not called to fight we are called to stand and when you say stand you are talking about standing your ground verse 11 put on the whole armor of god that you may be able to stand stand against what the wiles of the devil the strategies of the devil the tricks of the devil the schemes of the devil these are the phrases that are used in different versions of the bible that you are reading that means it is a psychological battle satan is not going to take you out physically satan is not going to take you out uh, emotionally he's going to take you out psychologically if he can get into your thoughts if he can make you think a certain way that is uh, opposite of the way the lord wants you to think uh, with your mind and thought thoughts uh, cleansed by the water of the word he's got you he's got he's got a foothold in your life it all begins with your thinking it all begins with the battleground of your mind then he says it is a psychological battle it's a spiritual battle it's not a physical battle he says we wrestle not against flesh and blood verse 12 we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against look at the words he uses here principalities powers rulers of this dark age spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenlies this is not a sermon this is a devotion otherwise i would have gone into every one of them and told you who they are they are all different and i would have told you who they are but you can do them you can do the research verse 13 therefore take up the whole armor why so he says because it's a psychological battle you don't want any cracks in the system you want him you want to guard yourself completely so that the enemy cannot get in you must know that there is an enemy of your faith you must know that there is an enemy of your faith many of you have walked away from the lord or you've drifted away from the lord and that's the easier thing for you to say oh i'm such a bad person oh i'm such a weak person i'm such a this i'm such no you are the son of the living god you are a child of god you are blood bought you are precious you are strong god has placed inside you the holy spirit he's placed around you the promises of god he's placed above you the lord jesus christ and he's placed beneath you the rock solid rock that of the lord jesus on which you stand so don't say you're weak you could say you're stupid because you didn't put on the whole armor and satan got in but whenever satan does get in when the wicked one gets in it's his wiles it's his schemes it's his tricks it's his it's his uh, strategy and we can outdo it we are victorious he who is greater in us is greater than he who is in the world there is no moment in time when a believer cannot turn things around one prayer fast for a day get your get your ground back one prayer fast for a day get your ground back don't feel sorry for yourself don't go into a slump get back on your feet hold put on the whole armor of god and tell satan what you think of him this is a psychological battle so get your mind back get your mind back for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against and he lists those things verse 13 therefore take up the whole armor of god that you may be again he says be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all that 
to stand verse 14 stand so you get the picture stand 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 your ground verse 14 stand therefore having girded now he lists the armor you ready for this now he lists the armor the first thing in verse 14 if you're taking notes is the belt of truth if you don't know what's true you're going to fall for a lie some people are so uh, ignorant about the doctrines of their faith they're ignorant because they don't want to be uh, uh, radical. They don't want to be, uh, you know, orthodox. They don't want to be, uh, you know, all into that, uh, into the academic stuff. Okay, fine, congratulations. But the fact is that if you don't know the truth, you're going to fall for a lie. The truth of scripture, the truth of the doctrines of the faith are what keep you alive. It's what keep you, keeps you strong. And a believer's first, so let's talk, let's talk CL, let's talk, let's talk in 2021. This year, I am going to review truth. I'm going to review the 11 fundamental doctrines of the faith. I'm going to make sure that I revise it every three, four months, every six months. I'm going to revise it and ensure that I have not been, my, my screws haven't come loose that I have not begun to wa uh, waver on the things that I have come to believe, the thing, the non-negotiables of my faith. And if you want to know one more about that, we can pick that up later. The second thing he says is, uh, stand uh, belt of truth. So that's, a, that's the first one in four, verse 14. Then he says, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. That's your character, brothers and sisters. The, the, the breastplate covers your heart. It covers, it covers the purity of your, of your life, your spiritual life. It's your character. So keep your hearts pure. Keep your hearts pure. What does that even mean? Pure water is essentially only water. Pure Christian is essentially only Christ. Only Christ. Nothing else. Not Christ and this, Christ and that. Only Christ. Okay? That's verse 14. Verse Move to verse 15. He says, and put on the shoes as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. What does that mean? Uh, train to share the gospel. This year, I want to train to share the gospel. I want to know how to give the gospel in one minute. How to share the gospel in three minutes. How do I tell my story? How do I talk about Jesus? For those of you who have never, ever had a Jesus conversation with a friend or with a loved one or with a colleague or with a, uh, a co-rider on the bus or metro, you've never opened up a conversation uh, for whatever reasons, uh, train yourself to do that. We'll have training and make sure that you know how to give it in one in a minute, in three minutes, in five minutes, how to tell the story about how Jesus saved you and what he has done for us. The fourth thing, the fourth thing is as shoes, uh, the, in verse 16, in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, the shield of faith. Um, this is out, outside of the, the armor. This is something you hold up to. The breastplate of righteousness is something you wear, but the shield you hold in your hand, that's, this requires a little bit of mobility because you need to know where the darts are coming from. He says, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. Those are doubts. Those are doubts and those are fears. What does Satan have against you and how does he shoot at you in a psychological warfare? In a psychological warfare. He shoots at you fears and doubts. Fears and doubts. I'm not talking about self-doubt. I'm not talking about self-doubt. Uh, you have enough of you, all of these gurus and, and uh, you know, motivational speakers to talk to you about self-doubt. I'm talking about doubting God, doubting his reality, doubting his presence, doubting his goodness. Yes, God is good, but is he good to me? Yes, God answers prayer, but will he answer my prayer? You know, yes, God is near, but is he near to me? You know, yes, God is holy, but is he too holy for me? Um, th this, is, this is the doubt of God. So what do we do? What's we, what are we going to do in 2021? We're going to surrender our fears and doubts. We're going to surrender our fears and doubts and we're going to build our faith in all circumstances. Underline that. In all circumstances, take the shield of faith. You go out without a shield, he's going to get you with which you can extinguish the flaming darts of the evil one. The shield of faith is your fellowship. You, every time you stand in fellowship, every time you hang out with others whose faith is strong, 
Every time you spend time with God's people, your faith gets stronger and stronger. The more you spend time away from God's people, your faith gets weaker and weaker. You're basically now going out into a world without a shield, and then Satan's able to take you out. With what? With fears and with, with uh, doubts. What are you primarily fearful about? You're fearful that God's not going to stand with you. You're fearful that God is not going to, he's not, got, not watching your back, or he's not going to provide for you. You're fearful because you don't know if you'll make it on your own or whatever else fear you might have. Moving on to verse 17, the next piece of armor is the helmet of salvation. Where do you wear the helmet? On your head. Where is salvation? In the assurance of your mind. In the assurance of your mind. Romans chapter 12, verse 1, 2. Where renew your mind. Why? Because your thinking not only needs to be eradicated of the doubt and the, and, and the fears, it now needs to be filled with the truth of God. It needs to, it's, it's here that you know that you are saved. It's here that you know that you are saved. And where does assurance come from? It comes from being at the table, being at communion. The more you are at communion, the more you break bread, you are assured of your salvation. You are assured that you are part of Christ. Jesus said, eat of me, eat of me. If you want to eat, if you want to uh, want my life to flow in you, eternal life, then you need to eat of me. Eat of my flesh, drink of my blood. Horrible terminology in terms of if you think physically, but if you think of what Jesus is saying, he's saying it's partake of my life. So communion is where we do that. I am the bread of life that's come down from heaven. This is my blood which is shed for you. That's why communion is so very important and integral to the life of a believer. It is the only one of two rituals that we have that connect us to eternity. One is baptism and the other one is a communion. So the helmet of salvation is the assurance. And I keep the helmet of salvation by maintaining, uh, maintaining my walk with the Lord, maintaining my character, main, maintaining my, my, my presence at the Lord's table, maintaining fellowship with others who are with me. Then he talks about the sword. The sword is the only offense, offensive part of your armor. It's the only part with which you actually fight. And what, do, what are you fighting? You're fighting a psychological warfare, in which case you're fighting lies. In which case you're fighting lies. So when you know your truth, belt of truth, then you are able to fight a lie. So you take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and by the word, you are able to counter the life, life circumstances and people and situations in your life. What am I going to do this year? to put on that armor, to put on that, to, to make sure the sword is in my hand. I'm going to study God's word. Half an hour, at least a week, sit with Pastor Jeremy's uh, video or, or just open. There are hundreds of podcasts. There's a uh, speakers out there. Put on a podcast, listen to God's word, study God's word, break it down, chew on it, think through it. I'm going to memorize a scripture. I'm going to put it into my head. And then I'm going to also uh, 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 allow allow God's word to rule my mind. Let let God's word decide what stays in my mind, what doesn't. So that's the sword. Uh, and lastly, he says praying, praying in the spirit. You want to pray intimately, and you want to pray intercessorily. You want to pray intimately, and you want to pray intercessorily. Praying intimately simply means between you and God. There is a prayer life. There's a talking life. There's a conversation, non-stop conversation happening between you and the Lord. There is actual connection. You've, you're hearing from him and you're responding to him. That's prayer. Talking to him is not prayer. Talking to him is not prayer. When you respond to what he has just said, that is prayer. Because now it's a conversation. And let him speak first. He's slightly bigger than you, greater than you, more important than you. Praying at all times in the spirit. That means you are praying back his will. You're praying in accordance with his will. You're praying in response to his will. Uh, he says, with all prayers and supplications, with all prayers and supplications, to that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all saints. Now he's talking about intercessory prayer. Pray for yourself by all means, but pray for others. When you pray for me, I pray for you, she prays for him, he prays for her, they pray for them. When we're all praying for each other, we are guarding ourselves. We are guarding ourselves from Satan's attack. Okay? 
Now, so far, we seem to be talking individually. Everyone put on your own armor. But do you know that Paul is talking to the Ephesian church? He's telling the church to put on the armor. He's telling the bride of Christ to put on the armor. So this is a corporate armor as well. So when we are all praying for each other, even for our unsaved relatives, even for our uh, wayward children, even for our uh, loved ones, relatives, when we are praying for each other, we are guarding the community so that he cannot get in. We are guarding each other so that he cannot get in. And every one of us goes through seasons of weakness, seasons of wandering, seasons of worklessness. So when we do that, others praying for us guards us from Satan taking, making the most of us or taking advantage of us when we are weak. Remember, the wolf comes to destroy. The wolf comes to steal. Uh, the wolf will always go after... Uh, remember the John 10 passage? The wolf will always go after a lone sheep. The wolf will never go after a sheep that is in the fold. He has to deal with the shepherd. And he knows the shepherd better than you. He's not going to come in. He's going to look for one lonely sheep who has wandered off. And we have so many of them in CL. We have so many wandering alone sheep in CL. And we need to get down to praying for them. And we need to cover them with prayer. That they may come back into the fold and the wolf does not have a chance to take a shot at them. To grab them. We cannot afford to lose anybody. God is the one who is saving people. Jesus says, all that you bring to me, I don't leave. Nobody can take you out of my hand. Nobody can snatch you out of my hand. My father is greater than me. Nobody can snatch me, the, you out of my father's hand. So then shouldn't believers also be part of this sheep keeping ministry? We must pray for each other and we must not let anybody wander even for a week or two weeks. Ask the people even in this own, in this minute, in this uh, fellowship right here, ask people when you wandered off, when you walked away from the Lord or when you drifted away and nobody came after you, didn't it last for years and months, months and years? Didn't it do its damage, fair, fair share of damage? How can we not love each other enough to hold each other close and cover each other with prayer? So there is intimate prayer and there is uh, intercessory prayer. And Paul says also pray for me. Paul says also pray for me. That is uh, something to think about this morning and I'm going to break it up and I'm going to make it into to-dos, into goals, spiritual goals for this coming year as we, a community of faith, take on uh, uh, the armor, put on the armor and secure ourselves from every end so that that fool, that serpent, that snake, the devil does not have any foothold, does not have any place in our lives, in our, in our community. We will fight for each other, we'll back each other up and we will not turn on each other because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It is a psychological battle it is a spiritual war, uh, war uh, armor, and we will not be found weak. May the Lord bless his word this morning.